welcome to this week's piece. So this sweet little thing I picked up outside of a local thrift store by my parents' house. And it was, when I first got it, the drawers were completely stuck in. Nothing would come out. So they had it just outside as free because it had quite a bit of damage to it. Um, I quickly just kind of messed around with the drawers to get them to go in and out just so that I could transport it and get everything going. But there's a lot of craziness going on with this. Um, the top, which I am not sure is original just based on what it looked like on the inside and also the four screws that are in the top, which obviously isn't how they would have attached the top. I was a little bummed about that. Um, the hardware is all original, which is cool. The drawer bottoms are in relatively decent condition just because they had the liners in. I am missing one escutcheon, which is kind of a bummer. So I opted to take them off. And then if I decide to try and find a replica of one of those, I might do it or they'll just go into my stash for another piece. Cause these are um, fairly common pieces of hardware. Of course, I just go through and take everything out. Again, I messed with the drawers earlier just to get it so that it was movable and I could put it somewhere. Um, but now I'll have to go through and actually make all the repairs, take off the hardware, get it cleaned up, and well, you know the drill. When I have repairs to make on these types of dressers, it's usually a lot easier to do without the top on. And also, since I'm going to be redoing the top, I want to make sure that I don't have to worry about the screws on the inside. So we're just taking that off to make my life simpler. Now the split in the top needs to be repaired, but I'm just seeing what I can do with it. So I put a clamp on and if it can clamp back together, then that means I can just do a glue up and it'll work just fine, which in this case it did. So that was really great and fortunate. Um, I do not have all my tools with me because you guys know I've been traveling back and forth between Oregon and California. So I had this extra scraper. It is not the best tool for this one, this specific kind of scraper because it is a curved surface, um, but it did just fine. And then I just went through and hand sanded everything again. All of my other tools are in California now and I didn't bring them with me because I'm something. So for the split, I just have a glue syringe and I'm making sure that it goes all the way through. Um, I have the tape down to since again, I'm hand sanding so I don't wanna have to do extra work. I'm trying to make this as easy as possible. So putting the tape down prevents the wood surface from absorbing the glue and making me have to work harder to get it off It'll just be easier in the end. And then I'll also be using sawdust to help fill in anything that I need to.
and I kind of love when old pieces have just a billion repairs on them and a lot of them are just random. Like there was lots of staples in here. I found bolts in the top, which wouldn't have been original. Tons of um, newer glue just from different joints and everything. So I have to go through and redo all of these joints because they were all loose. I could have actually broken down the entire dresser into individual sticks of wood. <laughs> But I instead just opted to glue everything back together. I use a mallet to make sure everything is locked in. And then my clamps weren't quite long enough, so I just stacked everything on top of it and let it sit overnight. And it was good as new. I want to make sure everything worked out well from the night before so I'm placing the drawers in I'm adding a bit of wax on all the glides and everything to make sure they're sliding easily in and out before we go ahead and put the top back on and start working on everything I did notice that all of the drawers wanted to go further back in and there weren't any of the little drawer stop marks that they would have had at the front of the dresser. So in this case, I just opted to add some blocks in the back and those prevented the drawers from going any further back than I wanted. Now while the glue on the top is dried up, I can remove that tape and then go through with just a quick sand to buff off any of the extra sawdust that I had on there and cleaning up the tape, making sure there was no extra glue and then I can go ahead and start staining. So I didn't actually want to do a crazy stain on this. This is the Poly Plus stain in Jacobian. I think this is the only way I like doing this. Um, I can't do a thick coat of it. It just doesn't sit well. But if you do a teeny tiny bit on a rag and kind of just buff it into the surface, I find that it leaves a really nice sheen and gives it a subtle tint, which is all that I wanted to bring the top grain back to match the rest of the wood paneling on the side of the dresser. So that's all I was going for here. Not a crazy stain, just something that was going to help it blend in with the rest of the piece since I took all the finish off. And then this stuff had a whole skin over the top of the poly. So as you can see, I'm pulling it out and then I just use what's left on the underside of that so I'm not wasting any. And then of course you just toss it cause that's weird. I really like this color for these woods that want to go a little more orangey and stuff. Just, I don't love that. So when I use, this one has almost a cool green undertone. So it combats against that, but then also gives it a nice color and still looks natural instead of, you know, a really dark stain. If you just use a little bit, work it into the wood and it's just a nice soft kind of accent of the grain. While the top is setting up, I'm going to give this piece a quick scuff sand. It didn't need it too much. The finish was not great on it. Um, and then I can go in and give it its base coat. So this piece I wanted to be cheerful, but also wintry. And I feel like winter kind of has that dreary vibe to it. So I was like, oh, let's make this just a happy, happy winter scene. So I opted for this really lovely light yellow. It's, I've never done a yellow piece before, but I'm like, I don't know, I was just, I was feeling it. So this is what I started as my base coat. I did two coats of this soft yellow, covered perfectly, and then it's also the base of my painting. So as you can see, I just pull out the colors that I believe I'm going to use in the painting and get started. So the way that I do this is it's easier to work into wet paints. There are certain parts that you want the paint wet and there are certain parts where you want the paint dry. 
So for the beginning, when I'm doing the background, I really like the piece to be wet because it helps the colors blend in together. And on this huge brush, this brush is from the dollar store. It's super cheap, but it works great for this because the bristles aren't very good. <laughs> So it, you can see each impression of the bristles, which makes it look like the leaves on the trees. So I just dip the upper corner in almost a multitude of paints. And when you are doing distance, you want the colors to be a lot softer because it makes things appear like they're further away. So for this first round, I'm you can see mixing different colors to make it look like there's individual trees, but it's kind of the softer colors that I'm going for on this back layer. And then as I pull forward, I come down in the painting a little and then also my colors get quite a bit deeper so that you can differentiate distance and each individual tree. I hope that makes sense. You guys, I'm trying my best to explain what I'm doing. If you really want to learn how to do this, literally just watch Bob Ross because that guy actually knows what he's doing and I'm just playing around in hopes that what I do turns out. And Thankfully, I've not been sad yet, but that's not to say that it won't happen. As you can see, I'm still using all the colors that I was using before, but I added quite a bit of black in the mix just to give me that depth that I need for the closer objects. I've had a lot of you request for me to do this a little bit slower, so I have this slowed down quite a bit more from what I typically do. Usually I just speed through it and don't explain anything because, like I said, I'm not definitely not a professional at, at landscape painting. But for this bottom part, I'm just fading out the colors so that I have a base to work with. And then I'm going in with a light, light color. And snow is white, but typically when you see it, it's not this huge, bright, straight white, stark color. There's tons of grays and blues and all that in it. So I'm kind of figuring out how I want the lay of the land to go. And then you want to keep your brush that same kind of angle so that you can see everything and then I'm making you know snow looks like almost like sloping hills over the landscape so that's what I'm working with so initially I'm just laying down in a similar way and then it's a soft gray color going over the other colors that I had blended out and then I can hit up certain areas with a bit more of the brighter white to bring that out to look like the little sloping hills and I'm just working with it until it's making me happy. And that's literally all I'm doing is just kind of going back and forth, figuring out where I want high points and where I want low points to make it look like actual waves in the snow.
Now for this part here, it's supposed to be like ice water type situation. So I'm going a bit more blue with it, but I still want the other colors in because it's going to look like reflections. So for those, you pull straight down with your brush in the areas that you want the water or ice or whatever. You pull straight down and then you sweep it back and forth. Again, you want fully vertical lines and then when you go to blend it in, you do fully horizontal lines. You don't want any curves to this because water doesn't curve like that. So when you go straight down, it looks crazy right now. And then when you start blending it over, it's like, oh, I see. It's starting to look like what it's supposed to. And then you'll just fill out the water line later. And here I loved the soft reflections that I was getting from the colors in the brush you know, from the trees back behind it, but I didn't have any of the darker ones. So I just went in with the darker color, added a few there, and then I just blended those into the water as well to make it look a little closer to what I thought it should be. Again, you want your paint to be wet for this because it blends out really easily when it's wet. And then as far as the waterline goes, I just take my palette knife with a little bit of the, it's full white, there's no color in this at all, and Again, these want to be fully horizontal. There's no curves in this. You're just doing water lines by the land to put a differentiating line there. Then I added the near snow banks with just a touch of water lines because you wouldn't be able to see all of them because the way the snow would be sloping. So I added just a couple where I thought you might be able to see it. And then it was time for trees. Because I like a more blended look instead of just, because this one doesn't have a frame around it that I usually use, I'm taking more of the yellow paint going around the image and then I use a little bit of water from my Mr. Bottle and I'm using the brushes to then go in and kind of blend the picture into the yellow. So I'm doing it very softly. I'm not worried about it getting too blended because I still want to be able to see the picture obviously. I just didn't want it to be a stark contrast between the yellow and the picture so I'm going through and blending it out and making it look like it just kind of turns into a painting instead of stark contrasting lines of a painting.
So to start these back couple trees, I'm going to just do birch trees. And because of the winter season, I'm having these ones be stark. There's no leaves or anything on them. I just add in the black, it's with a thin, thin brush. And then I'll do all the branches off of it. And I was happy with those, but I didn't want the whole picture. I felt like it was too dreary to just have those. So we'll add some colorful trees in the front as well. And what you can see me doing here is taking some of the colors from the previous trees that I had mixed up that are really, really light and adding in branches on those just to make it look a little more lifelike. for these front trees, they're getting a little bit of a different treatment and then I'm keeping their branches a bit higher up on them so they don't go as low down the trunk. To do the bark on the birch trees, it's so easy. You just take a palette knife, you dip it in the white, and you literally just bring it from one side and scrape it over. And it leaves the imperfections like you would see in the bark. And I'll just do this on the left side of everything because that's where I'm envisioning the light is coming from. And then so on the left side of all the branches and kind of where I would assume the light would be coming and hitting them.
Birch trees are bright in themselves just because they have the white bark, but these trees are going to have darker bark. So I wanted them to still have their really bright, happy leaves on them. So I'm going in with just, it's um, melon, and it is just the brightest, prettiest, orangey, red, lovely. And then I've got a little bit of orange mixed in with it too, just so that I have a multitude of colors so that you can see the variations in the leaves. Again, I'm doing it with this large Dollar Tree brush that I have, and it just works so perfectly because the bristles are not great. For the bark on these ones get the same treatment as the birch trees except they have more of a brown blue tone because they're a much darker trunk I then went in with a smaller brush and watered down paint and added a few more sticky looking branches just so that they, you could see layers in the tree and then just kind of pushed them back with a larger brush. And then we're gonna make some snow and this is just watered down white paint. I used my fan brush with the palette knife and spray it all over the piece. Easy peasy. Now for the top, since I didn't want those huge gaping holes over the screws, once I reattached it, I just opted to glue in some dowels. I trimmed them off and sand them. And then I, of course I have to repair the finish, which is fine. It was super easy. I just sanded back and then added a little more of the stain and it was good to go. So I'm using the orange scented wax 
in this case and I'm sealing the entire piece in this. And then if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I will also do the top because I like having a poly and wax on the top of my pieces that I know are going to have some use. I just feel like it's a better, more durable finish. Now I'm going to hit the details with a little bit of black wax and a small brush because this already has the clear wax on it'll be really easy to move this around and wipe it back if I need to. And then once the wax absorbs in I can just go back through with a clean cloth and buff it in. The hardware, I didn't want to be too stark, so I opted just to clean it. And then I actually used silver and copper and went back and forth in several different layers of that. And then I'm actually going to take the black wax and tone it back as well because I didn't want it to be too shiny. But I wanted it to be kind of the colors pulled from the trees. Oh, hi, Taryn here with Elegant Upgrades. and. We've got our finished piece. This is just the most cheerful winter scene ever. It's so happy and bright, but still winter. I don't know. I think it is just the happiest thing I've ever seen. Um, obviously with the yellow, which I never do. I never, I've never painted a whole piece yellow before, but I'm like, you know what? It just seems like making it almost a warm winter if that makes sense i don't know it's just it's darling and you know i love these old dressers that need repairs they make me very happy to work on them um the pools are not of the greatest quality they could have been polished up but i thought they would be just a little too too much for this piece so uh, what I did is I went in with the two colors of paint and then I also hit them with dark wax to kind of tone them down. But I wanted them to be kind of the same tones as the background so that it was, I don't know, just a little more cohesive. But I do think they're beautiful. They've got lots of dents and stuff, but I think they just add to the character. The same with this, like you guys know, we can always fill these in and do the wood repairs where I slice it off and add in a piece of wood. But honestly, with this dresser in particular, just because of how many times it's been repaired, I mean, I saw tons and tons of old repairs. There's a billion glue drips in it from whoever did it. I mean, I'm guessing numerous people did it before. Lots of old nails in the dovetails, which I am not fond of. I do not love it when people nail in, but they were really old nails in the dovetails. And so it makes me just want to leave them and have them be a part of the history of the piece because I think that's kind of what give these, gives these old dressers the charms that they have. And then the top, just something about it made me think that it wasn't original to the piece. Like maybe they had a different, um, they had something happen to it and then they put on this one instead just because of the construction on the underside and the way that they did the screws in the top, which again, not a huge fan of, but we did plug them up. Not, it's not pristine. Again, it's fine. This piece isn't a pristine piece, but because the holes that were drilled out of it were so jagged and <laughs> messed up, there's not really much I could do to it to make it. So I think that's kind of what's cool about these is that you can just embrace that and know that it's going to be a beautiful piece. It's still fully functioning and just wonderful and it will still bring light to somebody's home, but also you can see all of its lives that it's been through and clearly this one has been through a lot of lives so that's really cool um clearly back in the portland shop right now next week i will not be lot you guys know it's lots of back and forth i do appreciate you guys so much for sticking it out and i know that it takes me a bit longer to respond to the comments so i just really appreciate you guys hanging in there and waiting for me so thank you so much also thank you so much to my cohorts I swear I'm gonna have an update. We've got lots of, I just have a lot of stuff happening right now. So it's getting a little crazy. 
But you guys are amazing. And everyone who subscribes and likes and comments and shares and all of you, just thank you so much. You guys are incredible. You're the reason that I get anything done, I swear. Because you just keep me on task and on schedule. And it just brings me so much joy to get to kind of hang out with you guys in the comment section after a video. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you next week.